Hey guys, what's up? My name is Ronan Vico. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get data from your Power BI data set published on your Power BI service and use this data on your automated cloud flow. The good thing about this automated cloud flow is that you don't need premium features or any of Power BI license like Power BI Pro or something like that. You just need your Power BI free in your standard Power Automate Cloud. So anyone can do this automation that you're going to learn right now. So just to move on, let's say that we want to get all the sum of units sold on the current month or all the units sold in all, all of the months just to get the value of the units sold in this data set. It's an example, so you can understand, learn, and do it on your own data set. Here on the Power Automate Cloudflow, you can create an instant cloud flow to run every time you need it, or a scheduled cloud flow every day at 9 a.m. send an email with this data. But you can also use the automated cloud flow and use the trigger when a Power BI data set is refreshed. It's an, an option here, okay? So you choose the right choice for you. I'm going to use here the instant cloud flow, but the trigger, you can choose any trigger that you think that is better for you. I'm going to use the manual just to make it faster here to test it. So manual. And after that, we're going to insert here the next step that's going to be Power BI. And we have this actually the run a query against the data set. And if you check here, we don't have the preview. That means that is a step that you can use in production. It's working perfectly. So you can use without any problems. Other thing that you, you can see here is that is the Power BI connector. It's a free, a standard connector. It's not a premium connector. So you can use it without any other license needed. Okay, let's click here and run a query against a data set. Is that that we're going to use? I'm going to select my connection here. And now I'm going to tell this connector which workspace is my Power BI report. So I have just one here. So it's my workspace. And you can check again that I don't have um, premium workspace or Power BI Pro. It's a normal Power BI free that you can use uh, your report. So I'm going to use my workspace and I'm going to select my data set. My data set here is testing, the, is testing data. So it's this data set right here where my report is using the data set. So let's select testing, re, testing data. And here it's the magic. Okay, here is the magic. We need to insert a query text. What query text we going to insert here? This query is made with DAX. So we we need to, to know DAX and create this query line by line, write the code and insert here. No, we can go to the Power BI desktop. And what I recommend you to do is to create an object table with the data that you want. So for example, I'm going to insert a table here. And let's say that I want to get all the unit sold from October, for example, okay? So I want to get all the sum of units sold from October. So what, what I can do, I create a table object, insert the unit sold, the sum of units sold, and I'm going to insert a filter here with the month name, saying that I just want October. So what is going on here in this object table? is a sum, the DAX of the sum of units sold, and the DAX filtering the month name October. We are not seeing this DAX, but we can see this DAX with an option here. You can select View tab, click on Performance Analyzer, and here we can start recording. After that, I'm going to refresh visuals. When I click refresh, we can see here our table that we created. 
if you are, you have a lot of objects, just to let you know, you can keep, click on selection and check what what object exactly I'm dealing with. I'm dealing with this object called table. Here on table, when I open up, I have the Dex query, and I can copy the query. Yeah, so I can copy this query, or I can run in Dex query view. That is something new on Power BI that we, you can test your Dex, right? So let's click here just to see. When I click here, let's check this Dex. He's using the October as filter on month name, and he's doing the calculate sum for me. If, even if I don't know DAX and I don't know how to create this uh, calculation query right here, I can use the object to do it for me, like I did, right? So you can do an object, insert on a table, insert your filters, and if you need it dynamically, for example, uh, in you need to change October because when I run it next month, I, I want to change the October to other month. I can change on the DAX query. So let's say month number is going to be easier to filter when I need it dynamically. It's a number, month, month number one, two, three, right? So let's change the filter here. Instead of the month name, I'm going to use the month number and I'm going to use is the monther October. Let's check again the DAX filter. Let's clear here and refresh visuals. Now I'm going to click table and again running DAX query view. Filter keep filters finish month number equals 10. So I, I, I can see the query and now I have exactly where I need to change if I want to change the month number. Did you get it? So let's copy that. Or you can copy directly from, from here. It's the same DAX, okay? Copy query, do the same copy, okay? And let's go back to the, our automated flow. On our query text, I'm going to insert that here. And what I was trying to say to you, it's that. Now I know this 10 is my month number. So every month that I, I run this flow, for example, I want to see the exactly month that I am right now. So I can change that for an um, expression. I can insert expression here to get the UTC now, for example, and format date time. I want to get the month number, right? So I can insert month, month, and I can insert inch here to make it an integer number. When I run this query, what's going to happen here? It's that it's going to filter the exactly month that I'm running. So let's check if it, if it is working. Right now that I'm recording this video is February. So it's the month number two, okay? Let's click here in save and run just to check what's going to be the response. I'm going to click test here manually, test and continue. Run flow, done. So the step runs perfectly and I have here results, table and rows and the sum units sold is exactly here. So check it out, I can have multiple table rows because like I said, I created this table object to make it easier, but I can have more columns and more rows, right? I'm doing an example with, with just one column and one row, okay? That's why I have just the sum of units sold. Now, to access that, I think that you know how to do it, right? You need to access results, table, and rows, and filter the sum units sold. So let's do it here. And in a compose, for example, just to, to see the data, I'm going to go dynamically here, query result row. In this row, it's doing a for each because we saw that can have multiple rows, right? So I can get the first row instead of that. Let's move back the compose here. 
let's go to the expression and use the first table rows let's add that and test it again you can see here that is an uh, array with each property is a uh, the calculation of the row so for example some units sold it's a property in this first object so i can get this first object right and the sum units so let's change this expression to the first object or the first row and insert here the sum units sold like it was on the object that we saw sooner okay so basically i'm just accessing the property all of that that i i show you is not something new i'm just doing with the json that is a response from the connector right so let's save and test it again and i can get this data and send on an email for example i could also i could also have a, a table that i want to get the table and format this table and send on outlook right but before that let's check if this number is the same number that is at my power bi so i'm february right now and tada, it's the same data he goes directly to the data set runs the query against the data set and bring back the response okay so now we can do for example a table and uh, use the table in an email let's let's do it just for just for fun i'm going to insert now not just a uh, month but i i want all the months right all the months and all the data from all the months now we have a bigger table and now i'm going to clear here again refresh visuals copy the decks i'm going to do it more faster now i'm going to change here my uh my query right i'm going to change here my query and let's check what's going to be the response so uh body the response like we can see here it's each row with a month and when we we see the is grand total row equals true that that is showing us the total row that we have on the table basically to finish this class what we want to do is to get the first table rows don't get the total so filter is grand grand total row false i i just just want each row that is not the grand total and change the column names right so let's let's insert that on a notepad to make it easier to see the properties click on edit and let's do it to finish so filter first i'm going to insert a filter array the array to filter is the first table rows and what i want to filter is where this property is equal to false so i'm getting all the rows that is false i don't want this total row the next step here is to rename the, the columns in an html table I, I want to get this array and and transform into a html table so i'm going to insert html and create html table right in the data operations from the result of the filter the result of the filter and i want to change the columns that i want to show because i don't want to show is grand total row right i just want to get this and that so let's insert finish months here and i'm going to do it like that item and the name of this is going to be month name and that other sum, sum of units sold going to be item sum of units sold add and the name of that is going to be sum of units so now i have my html ready i just need to send on an email so outlook send an email insert your own email i don't know wh wh who you want to send so i'm going to send from for myself here 
let's get my email subject my power bi data about units sold monthly monthly and here on the body i'm going to insert the output of create table html let's save it and let's test it manually so my flow failed let's check what i did wrong and my filter array don't filter any rows so let's check what i did wrong here oh <laughs> I, I i'm checking if your text is equal to other text that is wrong right i need to go here and change that to an expression so this column from my item is equal to false also here on the create html table i checked it to make sure that everything is okay and actually i did it wrong here the header should be the value and the value should be the header right so the month name is not the value it's the header so i'm going to insert it here and change i'm going to cut paste here cut and paste here now it's everything the right way so i did two mistakes and i'm recording so if you if you are doing step by step you should change here also these two mistakes here okay so let's let's run it manually again run the flow and now let's wait to check if it is working everything worked if i go here to my email then uh month name and some of units so i can format this html table i can do a lot of other stuffs i can uh be more creative here but I'm going to end this video right now and hope that you like it and you watch this video to the end and learn something new with me. Please consider to subscribe to this channel if you like this video. And if you watch this video to the end, comment your feedback about the video and also comment our secret word. Comment Apple, our secret word for this video. So I will know that you watched the video to the end. It's it's a a way of knowing who watched the video to the end so please comment now your feedback and let the apple in your comment share so we can grow up this channel hit the like button and see you in another class another video and subscribe